Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 2, Video 5. Today's topic is Average and Instantaneous Acceleration Graphs. The objective for today is to be able to determine acceleration on VT graph and XT graph. Finding acceleration on VT graph. On VT graph, to find the average acceleration between point 1 and point 2, we draw a slope, a straight line. This slope equals to the average of acceleration. Right, One-dimensional motion, the object average acceleration equals the slope of the line connecting the corresponding points on VT graph. Now to find the instantaneous acceleration at P1, what we did was move P2 closer and closer to P1, then that slope will become the slope of the tangent. The slope of tangent to the VT curve at a given point equals the instantaneous acceleration at that point. Finding objects velocity acceleration and the position from VT graph. So from VT graph we can find all three things, velocity acceleration and position. Uh, the information, if not exact value. So let's take a look at this graph. This is a VT graph. From here, we can find information about V. So for instance, at point A, V is negative. At B, V is 0. At C, V is positive. D, V equals 0. E is negative. So we can figure that, that out from right from the graph. The other thing we can find is acceleration. Because acceleration is the tangent, uh, the slope of the tangent line. So at A, the Acceleration is the tangent line of this yellow line that's positive. And at B is also positive, but com compare A and B, B is positive a little bit sm smaller. At C, the slope equals zero. That means acceleration equals zero at that point. At D, the slope is negative. So is E. But what's the difference between D and E? E is steeper, so it has a bigger uh, acceleration in magnitude. Next one, let's talk about um, position. So what uh, do we know about position in VT graph? We know the area under the VT graph, that's the area represents displacement. If given you at x, at a time uh, t equals to 0, x equals to 0. So you start from 0 at time equals to 0, then at b, you have moved in a negative direction because your velocity is negative. That area under the graph is negative, and that indicates your displacement is ne negative. You are in a negative position. You, you kind of work in the negative direction. Then from B to C, velocity is positive. You have moved in the positive direction. Compare these areas. BC looks bigger than the blue, the orange looks like a bigger than blue area. So as a whole, you are in the positive direction. From C to D, again, area is above the line, is positive. So as a whole, it's a positive. You're in the positive position. From D to E, again, you're working backwards. But as a whole, the whole thing compared to where zero is, the whole thing is positive, so at E, you are still in the positive position. Now, finding acceleration on the XT graph. On the XT graph, the acceleration is given by the curvature of the graph. The greater the curvature, the greater the acceleration. So let's see how can we determine that. In XT graph, remember slope represents velocity. Acceleration is change velocity divided by time. So this is VF. Vf is positive, Vi is negative. So your acceleration is positive minus a negative divided by the time. Remember this time interval can never be negative. So acceleration in this case has to be positive. If the curvature is up, we know acceleration is positive. Now how about in this section? In this section looks this, like the slope is constant. If slope is constant, velocity is constant, then there is no acceleration. How about curve, curve down? Curve down, Vf over here is negative. Vi over here is positive. So negative minus positive gives you negative. So acceleration is negative going downward. 
Let's take a look at this uh, XT graphs. Over here is a straight line means acceleration equals to zero because velocity is constant. Another example of constant velocity with constant negative, uh, uh, constant negative velocity, that means acceleration equals to zero. This one curves up. Curves up, acceleration is positive. But compared to the next curve, this next one has a bigger curve. So this one has a larger positive A. This is smaller positive A. This one curved down, the acceleration is negative. Has pretty large because it's a bigger curve. Now take a look at the last graph. First the curve up, then over here acceleration equals constant. I mean acceleration equals zero, velocity is constant. And last part, it curves down. Curves down, acceleration is less than zero. Curves up, it's positive in the middle. Acceleration equals to zero. Finding objects position, velocity, and acceleration from xt graph. So let's change. This is xt graph. So since it's xt graph, the first thing we can find out is the position, right? Over here is negative, zero, positive, positive, and positive. So that's a position at each point. In xt graph, slope is the velocity. So we can find information about velocity. Slope is positive, positive, zero, negative, negative. So positive, positive, zero, negative, negative. So both A and B are positive, but B has a bigger slope. So B's velocity is bigger. Similarly, compare D and E. D has bigger slope than E, so D has bigger speed than E. Next thing, we can find acceleration. Acceleration depends on the curvature. So at A, it looks like it's curving up. As you can see, slope is increasing. So acceleration is positive. At B, it looks like uh, velocity is constant. It's not changing. So acceleration equals zero. At C, it curves down. So acceleration over there is negative. At D, again, there is no no change in curve. There's no curve here at D, so acceleration equals to zero. At E, again, it curves up a little bit, so acceleration is bigger than zero, but it's smaller in value. Now let's take a look at this example. So if we are given xt graph from this graph, we can figure out what is vt graph looks like, what's at graph looks like. So the figure is a graph of coordinate of spider crawl crawling along the x-axis. Graph is velocity and acceleration is a function of time. Look at over here. This is a parabola. Parabola means there is acceleration. Velocity is increasing. So over here, velocity is increasing. Next part, velocity looks like the slope is constant. Indicate velocity is constant. So from here, next, from here to here, Velocity is decreasing, becomes zero, right? From here to here, velocity is increasing, but in the negative direction. And from 25 to 35 seconds, looks like velocity is constant and negative. Finally, it curves down. That means it slows down. As you can see, slope becomes zero. So the corresponding graph looks like this. Increasing, constant, Decreasing becomes zero, keep decreasing. Then negative constant, then decreasing becomes zero again. Now let's see what is acceleration versus time look like. In the beginning, this part, you'll have constant acceleration. Now over here, you should have zero. Over here is negative because acceleration equals the slope. Slope is negative. Over here, velocity is constant. Again, you have zero acceleration. Uh, slope is positive, acceleration is positive. Let's take a look at the next question. Refer to the graph. At which of the point P, Q, R, and S is the x acceleration positive? So here is the xt graph. To find acceleration, we have to look at a, a curvature. There is no curvature at P. D is curved down, so acceleration is negative. R, no curvature. S is a curve up, so S is positive. At which point is acceleration negative? At Q, because it's curving down. At which points does the acceleration appear to be zero? At P and R, looks like there's no curvature. 
Now at each point state, whether the speed is increasing, decreasing, or not changing. At P, there is no change because there is no curve. At Q, it curves down. That means acceleration is negative. How is the uh, speed changing? Speed is decreasing, becomes zero, then increasing. So first it is decreasing, then increase. And take a look at uh, R, R is again negative. There is no curvature. So it's constant. V is not changing. Now take a look at S. How is the velocity changing? Velocity is again. Speed is again decreasing, then increasing. So velocity actually is decreasing in the negative direction, then increasing in the positive direction. Next example. A child stands on a bridge, drops a rock straight down. The rock leaves the child's hand at t equals zero. At which of uh, which of the graphs shown here best represents the velocity of the stone as a function of time? So here is really regions level questions because a child can stand on the bridge, drops a rock. When you see this keyword drops, that means velocity should start with zero. You can just look at the graphs. All the other four doesn't start with zero except B starts with zero. Let's see if B makes sense. One, the child drops the rock. The velocity increases in negative direction. Well, drop is falling down. Downward is usually negative. That, that makes sense. But the line is not straight. But uh, you probably say, isn't uh, gravitational acceleration constant? Why is the line not straight? That's true, but it could be because of the air resistance. Due to air resistance, acceleration changes. So the answer is B. Take a look at our last question. So a car's velocity as a function of time is given by Vxt equals alpha plus beta t squared. Alpha equals 3 meters per second, and beta equals 0.1 meters per second cubed. Calculate the average acceleration. Average acceleration equals the change velocity divided by time. So V5 minus V0 divided by 5 minus 0. How do you find a V5? Plug, plug the 5 in the time. That's what you should have, 2.5 meters per second squared. Calculate instantaneous acceleration for t equals 0 and t equals 5. Instantaneous acceleration is a derivative, dvx over dt. So the first part become, becomes 0 because this part is constant. This is beta times 2t becomes 0.2t. Then to find acceleration at t equals 0 and t equals 5, you simply substitute 0 and 5 into this expression. You should get a at 0 second equals 0, a at 5 second equals 1 meters per second squared. Next one, to sketch vxt graph. Vxt graph looks like alpha plus beta t squared. So this is a parabola, but does not start with 0, start at alpha looks straight up like this. Next one, you have to graph AXT. AXT looks this. A equals 0.2t. This is a direct relationship with t, so it should be a straight line going up. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.